non-stop rivalry action. Indians on the road as Cleveland goes up against the Chicago White Sox. The MLB here on 2K Sports. Welcome for 2K Sports with John Crook and Steve Phillips. I'm Gary Thorne. Wednesday Night Baseball. A look at Carlos Quinton, no doubt getting ready for some offensive punch. We've got over 39,000 in attendance. A quick look. The starting pitcher, Mark Burley. Steve, as he faces these Cleveland hitters, primary emphasis is what? As a hitter, when you face Mark Burley, you have to be ready. Be ready to swing the bat. He's a guy that's very efficient in the zone. He throws strikes and he works quickly. Make him get the ball up. Line up for the Indians. We'll take a look, courtesy of Pepsi. So who are you looking at, John? Well, Shinsu Chu's a guy, when you look at this lineup, is starting to produce some power for this team. He's a guy who has a great left-handed stroke. I tell you what, there's a different sound when that ball comes off his bat than most players can make. That shows he's got some pop. Let's see him produce today. And we're going to see Sizemore here. He'll be receiving the first pitch of the game. Center fielder, number 24, Grady Sizemore. That curve is just a little bit outside. One ball, no strikes. Now the Indians losing that last game. They'd like to turn it around quickly here. Game two of this series against Chicago. Wait, here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. And he's on. That's now a nice way to jump start your offense. Indian. And now's a good time to take a brief look how the White Sox stack up defensively. Now, Steve, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And Cabrera settles in. Runner on first base. Nobody out. Burley with a delivery. First pitch is a cutter. Looked at 0-1. And you can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. Good patience as has Dribble Cabrera lets that one go by for a ball, evening the count. I see the bit over match last game out. He's striking out three times in that one, so he's hoping to make a little more contact here. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they ranked. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases, and they were in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits, and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. It's going to be Laporta now. And Burley gets it by called strike and the count will go to 0 and 1. If the hitter pulls the trigger on this he's got a chance to drive the ball. He opened up was out in front but the inside changeup can be dangerous. Fastball swung out and missed struck him out one away. Well, he gets the first out of the inning right there. Now let's see if he can continue to bear down and work his way out of this jam and keep the score tied. Shin Su Chu looks to knock in a run. Well, looking for a bounce back performance today. Some disappointment after last game striking out twice. They're going to try for a double steal. Oh man the double steal worked as he beat the throw. Well, when you establish the inside part of the plate, it opens up the outside part of the plate. He goes with the curveball and gets the strikeout. Burley with a delivery. Sin Chu Chu not fooled by that one, and that's going to even up the count. Well, if the White Sox are going to win their division, they have to win within their division. They did not do that in 2009. Swung on, hit by Chu, and it's in there, and Chu knocks in the run. And Cabrera also comes on. Base hit knock. And a big one. Brings in a couple of runs. Johnny Peralta. By a tremendous clutch hit right there. This was his opportunity to deliver for his team with this big two RBI single. And that could be the deciding factor in this game right now with the way the pitching has been. And Johnny Peralta up. For the White Sox with a 34 and 38 mark in their own division, not good at all. And the Minnesota Twins were a big reason for that record being what it was. 
Well, a lot of teams that don't put pressure on you offensively like the White Sox do not do as far as base stealing, as far as hitting for extra bases, you know, taking the extra base, going first to third. When a team plays station to station like the White Sox do, they make it a lot easier to defend against, but they make it a lot easier to pitch against too. And that's why they had that losing record against their division. You know, guys, I think the White Sox need to just change that mental focus a little bit. I think they got distracted by things. They need to be prepared when they play those central rivals and understand the importance of those games. They've got the lead right now with speed on first base. You have to get him going, I think, Gary. Keep the pressure on. Keep trying to tack on some runs. We'll see Canerco holding him in there. And it'll be Valbuena standing in to hit. A runner on first with two outs. Burley with a delivery. That one is hit well. Quentin's there. That's caught. Side is retired. Great offense early. First inning sees the first two runs of this game. The Indians on top, two to nothing. And we've got Fausto Carmona out on the mound. Cleveland's got him starting in this one. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? Fausto Carmona has some of the best movement of any pitcher in the major league. The problem is he can't command it. He has to focus on throwing everything down the middle of the plate and let his natural movement take it to the corners. If he starts it at the corner, he's going to fall behind to the count and get in trouble. Swing and a miss, Pierre, strike one. This is how you get the routine ground balls. You pound that sinker down and away, trying to get the hitter to roll over his hands and pound it into the ground. The grounder to Peralta. And the leadoff man's on board. You love the offense when it gets going that way. Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? Well, the potential's there for Alex Rios to be a productive hitter. So let's see if he can provide some offense for his team today because they're going to need it. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. I don't know if you got a chance to see his last ball game, but he picked up two hits in that one, swung the bat well. Gary, this is where Juan Pierre's speed becomes a major factor in the game. He can really run. Pitch out. Nothing was on, though. Carmona delivers the 1 0 pitch towards the middle. And that's a base hit. Ramirez on board with the single. Has to check out the Indians around the diamond on their defense. Steve, keeping an eye on anyone? Well, it's Drupal Cabrera has great versatility up the middle. It doesn't matter where you play him, he has great range and instincts and the ability to be able to throw from any position on the field. And here's Paul Canerco. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. The pitch from Carmona. And this is inside. That got him pretty good. Well, the ball just sailed away from him. Couldn't control it. Now loads the base. Carlos Winken. No one out. Sacks full. He gets Quentin to swing. Strike one. Uh, Gary, as we saw the hit by pitch, now the base is loaded and so much pressure on this pitcher. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes, Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. And I think, Steve, we take a look now and see whether or not he can regain his composure on the mound. And a shot up the middle, and it falls as Pierre comes home to score. Now batting. What more do you need to see? Now you have to question his confidence. Giving up three straight hits. Not much going right out there at this point. And Beckham's in the box. And he's got a shot here to give his club the lead. Just one swing could do it. Well, this is what you're waiting for. This kind of opportunity to change the game. And your pitcher then can go out with much more confidence. Swung on. Line to right field. That's one away. That'll keep the sacks full. 
Still settling into the season. Here's who the Indians are going to be facing. One game left for the White Sox. That's tomorrow. Following that, they'll be on the road to play the Tigers and uh, one of the game's best hitters, Miguel Cabrera. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. After that, it's about defending home field. They go against the Rangers and their hitting star, Michael Young. A little bit of a light schedule on tap for them. I think they expect to be winning over the stretch. Three on and one out. Lined up the middle. And Cabrera, he makes it happen. What a play. And two. They got both of them that time. And Fausto Carmona will head in. Some damage done against him in the first inning. He's got to find his control. And we'll see the Indians next. And Brantley's in the box. Fielder number 23, Michael Brantley. Burley with a delivery. Oh, he watches the first pitch. That ends up in the zone. Strike one. Well, he gets a big breaker up in the zone and away. Gets away with one right there, but next time look for him to try to bury it in the dirt. Strike Take something off that time. In control with the count now. 0-2. Well, he clearly fooled him right there. He had him thinking fastball, and he pulled the string on it. And got him to swing right through it. Oh. Tried to get him to go after that curve. 1-2. and two. Now throwing that curveball down and in, he changes speeds to get the hitter off balance, but that pitch down and inside can get hurt if he leaves it hanging over the plate. Swing and a foul straight back. High for a ball, two and two. The 2 2. Curveball in there for a call for strike three. Well, oh, he just hangs that curveball. The hitter thought there's no way. That looks so good, but he's got to swing the bat. And we've got Kearns batting. Base is empty, one out. Pitch from Burley, swung on and missed. Well, Mark Burley again established himself as the ace of the Chicago White Sox staff. You talk about a guy who doesn't throw hard, but he keeps the ball in play. He makes his fielders work behind him, and that's why everyone loves playing with him. And Austin Kearns watching that one go by. Count is even. And for Mark Burley, he has turned into a real horse. This is a guy not only pitches well, and often, but oh, deep into games. Well, he sure does. He's a godsend to the bullpen because every time he goes out there, you know he's going to give you seven, eight, possibly even nine innings every start. Hard grounded a short, and Ramirez feels the ball. That retires turns, and a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. Tomorrow they wrap up this Cleveland series. They face another competitive team at home, the Minnesota Twins. That's a three game series and they'll take on the Blue Jays led by the power of Vernon Wells That series bound to be competitive. Marson's in the batter's box. Two outs and nobody on. And this is hit in the air foul down the left field line. And Pierre grabs that one, and the side's retired. No scoring here, ending this half inning. Cleveland 2, the White Sox 1. Leading it off, A.J. Brzezinski. Looking to carry the momentum from last game when he had three RBIs into this one today. Carmona's pitch swung on and missed. 0-1. Oh, that's a great pitch right there. That hard sinker. He just can't catch up. This one's grounded near third. Foul. Here's the pitch. Hot shot towards the hole. And so Pierzynski retired. 
And Mark Tiana. Nobody on base, one away. A smash between short and third, and Peralta's able to get to that one. And Mark Kotze up. Two outs, space is empty. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. And the side's retired. Kearns catches it, he'll head in. It goes quickly for Fausto Carmona. One, two, three. He's settling in now. No runs allowed in the second. Third inning coming up. We've got the top of the order coming up. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Crump, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Grady Sizemore at the plate. He's going to start the third here. And he starts Sizemore out. And that one's too high, taken for a ball as Burley tried upstairs. Now, I'm not sure I like this cut fastball up in the zone right here. It's a pitch you want to get down in the zone to run off the corners. Don't leave it over the plate. Misses outside for ball two. Here it comes, 2-0. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And it gets through. Great swing today. Now two hits. But when you're setting your defense, you don't set your defense for guys not to hit the ball well. This ball wasn't hit hard, but he gets down the line so quickly he's able to beat it out for that base hit. And Cabrera settles in. Runner on first. First pitch on the way. Ball. It's taken for a ball. Bottom dropping out on that burly pitch. And Przinsky calls for the pitch. Burley's pitch taken for a strike. One and one. Good pitchers change the hitter eye level. You go down low, then you run the fastball up high. Oh, Sizemore. Here we go. Right to. And he's in there at second base. Swing and a hot shot. Oh, avoided the path of that ball. That was right up the middle. Was that ever close? And Sizemore comes home. Openings for this lineup offensively. Don't give it to them now because they are hot. Now this pitch just cuts right over the heart of the plate. The hitter handled it perfectly. Mm. That's one of those where you've uh, you've given in by making a bad pitch and and really made it much easier for the hitter. Now he's better than that. Bear down. It's going to be Laporta oh. now. So the direction here, Steve, for this lineup, just stay in charge. Right now they are. Uh, Gary, we just saw quality at bat Great right one. there. He got the job done when he got his pitch. He knew what to do with it and he delivered. Burley with a delivery. Good time to call for that changeup. One and two. As Ralph Kiner, our old buddy, used to say, you know, good at bats is one where you get production, and that's what they got right there. Yeah, but he's also the guy who said you can't win the game unless you take the lead. And there's another one. Couple of quick hits. And now play. Cleveland, here's the chance they want. Well, that's three consecutive hits he's given up. He can't be out of gas yet. He just has to bear down and get somebody out. They don't want to go to the bullpen this early in the game. Runners at the corners with no one out. And the first pitch. The 0-0 delivery of fastball taken for a strike. Last year, he'd like this average to be the overall number. 417 against Mike Burley. Waves at that fastball in the hole now, 0 and 2. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two seam fastball. Swung on, that is hit. One away. And Cabrera will score. 
and a look at next Sunday. The New York Yankees are roadbound as they take the trip to Tampa Bay to face the Rays. Things will get going at 1.30 Eastern. Well, Gary, that should be a fun one to watch for sure. Here's Johnny Peralta now with the RBI opportunity. He was a strikeout victim last time through the lineup. One out, a runner on at second base. Here's the pitch to Peralta. It's taken for a ball, bottom dropping out on that burly pitch. Well, that's the pitch you want for the ground ball out, that two-seam fastball at the bottom of the strike zone. Just couldn't quite catch the plate. Good eye by the hitter. That a swing and a miss by Peralta, and that'll knock the count up. Now, if you got a chance to see the last game, you saw he seemed a little bit flustered at the headed for the middle. Oh, my. It ends up in the glove. I can't believe he caught that. He was just trying to get out of the way. Pitchers are taught once they release the ball, they become a fielder. He was in good position right there to be able to make the play and help himself. Runner in scoring position at second with two down. And here's the first one. Good pitch from Burley. Swung on and missed. Right 0 1 pitch is a change. Swung on and missed. 0 and 2. You're Check out. swing. Strike three called. Side retired. Well, had to throw 20 pitches. So he'd like to keep that count lower than that. Indians ahead by three. All lit up here at U.S. Cellular Field on this beautiful night for a game. And it's Juan Pierre now to lead it off. Well, if you saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung the bat well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. The pitch from Carmona. Back up the middle. You know something? That was such a great play. That's worth one more look. How about the camera work right there on that one? Terrific job, guys, on the camera. And what a play. And it's Alexei Ramirez now. One away. And a struggling season in 2009 for Alexi Ramirez. Here was a guy that they thought they would put at the top of their lineup. He'd steal a lot of bases, but unfortunately, he got off to such a bad start. Swings and misses. The sinker, 0 and 1. For Alexei Ramirez, yet another one of the uh, Cuban defectors getting a chance to play Major League Baseball. Well, and the White Sox seem to think that he could be at the swing, hot shot, well, bueno. And so Ramirez retired. Look, well, Gary, he's pitching well right now. And that's seven straight that he's retired. He is really locked in. Base is empty with two outs. That's it foul by Conurco. And the 0 1 by Carmona. Strike two. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Conurco now will look to tighten up that zone. That pitch worked because of deception, but not because of location. He wants that change up down and away, not up and away. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. And a good half inning there, gone in short order in this one. Indians four, the White Sox one. And Brantley's in the box. Oh, for one thus far. Number 23, Michael Brantley. Here's the first pitch. That one swung on its line. Back, I'm able to pull that one in. Well, sometimes you have to hit them where they're not. That was a shot right there, but they hit it right to the second baseman for an out. One out, nobody on. Burley with a delivery. And it's fouled away. Oh! The pitch towards the middle. And that gets down. Kearns on with a base hit. Well, he stayed behind the ball right there real well. Got himself that one-out base hit. Marson's in the batter's box. 
Well, looking for a bounce back performance today. Some disappointment after last game striking out twice. Burley with a delivery. Hit sharply towards the hole. Now the opportunity for so offense is right team. now. Center just kind of lean in, Steve, and slap that thing the other way on that kind of pitch. Well, you can't pull that pitch. If you do, it's going to be a ground ball to short. You want to punch it to right field. He's one of the best at doing it. And Brady Sizemore up. When you look at the season into 2009 for the Cleveland Indians, the glaring thing you see is that their best player, Grady Sizemore, played in only 106 games. That has to improve into the 150, 155 game range if the Indians are going to have any chance of competing. 1-1 one, one pitch is a cut fastball taken for a strike, one and two. Grady Sizemore, the one thing that you can look forward to in a new season is he is hungry. I mean, it was such a disappointing year last year. He wants to uh, He absolutely does. He's such a proud player that he knows that 2009 was a throwaway year, and he's going to make up for it in 2010 and try to help carry the Cleveland Indians to some success. Two men on and two men out. Here's the first pitch. That one's wide as Burley misses. Here's the 1-0. He gets Cabrera to swing, strike one. Looking at last year's numbers, a very good 292 against the White Sox at U.S. Cellular Field. And he looks at a slider in there, and it's one and two now. He has great bite on this slider, throwing it down and into the hitter. Gets away with one, and he gets in for the strike. That's Drobo Cabrera. He's unable to move that bat, and that is going to be strike three. And heading to the dugout, Mark Burley. And it'll be the White Sox. Clean up batter. You'll have next. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He'll lead it off here, bottom half of the fourth. Carlos Quinton. First pitch to Quinton. Now he swings, hits this one high in the air. Deep left center field. They wish that homer had been chased in a couple more. They'll take it though, only down two. Sometimes pitchers just try to lay one in there to get ahead early in the count. This time he paid for it. Yeah, it looked like he thought he would take that first pitch, so he came down the shoot with it. You know, it's one thing to work ahead, but you at least have to make a quality pitch. Now, oh, Gary, they need to continue to score, but already the White Sox have some momentum and they've drawn close. Jordan. No outs and the base is empty. First pitch to him. He's wishing he laid off that one, a strike and a pitch in the dirt. Well, they're not all the way back yet, but they're closing in. And at this point, they really didn't need to get all the way back. They just needed a feel that the offense was going to be there for them. And boy, nothing spells momentum like home run. Out and Beckham set down. And Alex Rios up. And the 2009 Rios. season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios, starting out with the Toronto Blue Jays and then continuing on when he got traded to the Chicago White Sox at the trade deadline. Things just didn't get better in either place. Hut shot towards the hole. And out. The pitcher makes a nice play at first base. That was a nice play. Saw the opportunity at first. Didn't waste any time getting over. That's the key. Beat the runner to the back. Good hustle off the mound. It's going to be Przinski. Over his career, going 291 off Cleveland. He delivers. Sinker swung on, missed 0 and 1. Well, he was way behind on that one. Must have been looking for something else. The grounder to Peralta. Throws to first in time. That's three down. Narrow their deficit a bit. They pick up a run on the dinger. The White Sox, they're not going to concede this. They've made a pretty good chunk out of that lead. Fifth inning, 
Taking a look there, Manny Acta. He's been happy with his offense being able to provide the two run advantage here. It's going to be Laporta now. Had a base hit his last time up. Here's the first pitch. Strike one. And Burley gets it by. Called strike of the count will go to 0 and 1. You can really stay out of big trouble in the big inning if you can spot your fastball down in the zone. Strike Good change up. It's quickly 0 and 2. Ground ball to short. And Ramirez feels the ball. And Laporta is retired. Routine ground ball to short. He makes it look routine. Retires it over. One out, nobody on. Burley with a delivery. Swung on and fouled away. Oh. Liner between first and second. In there for a base hit. They just couldn't catch it. That's going to bring up Johnny Peralta. Uh, gets a letter high pitch, a good pitch to hit, and he takes advantage of it. Nice job. Hitting from behind is not an easy thing to do in this game, but a little easier when the pitch is up there. Uh, you throw it over the plate like that, it's going to cost you. The pitch. It's hit foul by Peralta. Mike Burley gets that important strike going to. And it holds it 0 and 2. This one's grounded to second, and he scoops it up. The second for one, and they turn the double play. So no runs on one hit, and nobody left on. Indians four, White Sox two. And here's Mike Tian leading it off. Uh, coming into this game, he's got to have some confidence because he picked up two hits last time out, so got to be seeing the ball pretty well. Carmona's pitch swung on and missed. 0 and 1. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here, and he's struggling right now. Swing and a line at a right center. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. Well, a good start to this inning, but let's see if the guys behind him, after he starts out this inning with the single, can follow up and finish this inning off with some runs. And here's Mark Kotze. Last year, one for three off Fausto Carmona. The runner on first, no out. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Has him out in front as he swings and misses strike one. Hoping to try to continue some momentum off of his last game when he picked up three base hits. See if he can't keep it going. And that one's hit. Kearns to field. One away. Stepping up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. Left and one Pierre to Number bat. Six. One for two in the ball game. Pierre. One out man on first. The pitch from Carmona. That's it foul by Pierre.
Well hit towards the middle. And he's up with it. There's one. And there's two. A double play. No runs. One hit. And no one left on base. Indians still leading. We'll have the six, seven, and eight hitters coming up next. Eyes again, taking a look at you right there. He wants offense, and he wants his pitching to shut the door, too. Two runs back. He needs a little of each. And it'll be Valbuena standing in to hit. First pitch on the way. Way out there with the curveball, 1-0. Had a real strong offensive game last time out. Three big base hits. Now the 1 0 pitch. 1 0 pitch. That's the cutter in there. 1 1. Well, that cut fastball away. It looks like it's coming down the heart of the plate. Runs to the outside corner. It tends to turn into a pop up. Popped into foul territory down the left side. Wow. Tried to track that one down, but comes up empty. Now Pruszynski positions himself. There's a swing and a liner now towards first. And Conerco makes the catch. Shielder, number 20. And Brantley's Michael in the box. Brent. Lined out last time up. Base is empty with one away. And the first pitch. Strike one. And Burley gets it by. Called strike and the count will go to 0-1. Even with the late movement on the cut fastball, you don't want to throw it up in the zone because a hitter can fight it off and muscle it over the infielder. Swing and a miss, and he's behind on the count 0-2. And, the pitch. Oh. Foul straight back. Ball in there, struck him out on number two. Well, two strikes, he goes right at him with the fastball. He challenges him, he throws it at the knee, so even if it's put in play, it stays in the ballpark. And Kern settles in, ready to go, first pitch. And a swing and a miss, good pitch from Burley. And here's the delivery. Strike two, no balls, two strikes. Kearns, who can K, he doesn't want to do that here. I'm well, going to try to make some contact in this ball game today because he swung and missed a little bit too much, striking out twice in his last game. Ball. Change up, thought he had him, but it's one and two. The one two pitch. He got him so far, eight strikeouts today. So Mike Burley gets him one, two, three. Pitching well, eight strikeouts for him. And it'll be the White Sox. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. One for two in the ballgame. Number 10, Alexei Ramirez. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Carmona's pitch swung on and missed. 0 oh 1. Pitch on the way. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. That's one away. This ball was headed to the gap, but the left fielder got a good jump on it, able to run it down and make the play. And here's Paul Canerco. Well, the thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career is he'll play a lot of games at first base, but when he needs a break, he can go to that DH role. He's not a guy that's going to steal any bases. He has hardly any speed left, but he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup and a leader in that clubhouse. The pitch. That's it foul by Canerco. Canerco is certainly one of those valuable players, especially in the American League as a bench player because he does give pitchers concern. You know if you make a mistake, he can drive one. Well, he really can, and that's the thing with him. And, you know, you remember back to that World Series year in 2005 with the White Sox, how clutch he was. Smash towards the hole. 
There's the throw. Uh, and he's aboard. That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. Boy, I don't know on that count, Steve. Number one, the fact that he swung is kind of a surprise. I don't know how he hit that. Well, Alice. you're right. On an 0-2 count, you have to protect the plate. Sometimes it's a defensive swing, but sometimes it works out. One out, runner on at first. First pitch to Quinton. Swing and a rocket toward short. And Cabrera gloves that one. Now batting for the Chicago White Sox. Second and Beckham's in the box. Number 15, Jordan Beckham. Runner on first, two away. The pitch from Carmona. A swing, line drive, deep left field. And that's the third out. That'll do it. You see a good inning from Fausto Carmona. He's leading in what is turning out to be a pretty good pitching matchup. And we're through six innings. End of the order, ready to do some work at the plate. There's Manny Acta, the manager. Two run lead for his club, hoping to come away with a win. Marson's in the batter's box. He'll start things off here in the summit. First pitch, here it comes. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. Well, that cut fastball away. It looks like it's coming down the heart of the plate, runs to the outside corner. It tends to turn into a pop-up. Off speed pitch is in there, and he falls behind, 0-2. He got him. That's nine K's now. Check out the movement on this on K Cam. Clocks in at 85 miles per hour. A breaking ball right there gets him to swing. You can see that back leg kind of jelly bitten a little bit. He really used the off speed pitches during that at bat to get it over with. On the way. And that swung on and hit. Rios. And it gets down a three for four now game. Good hitting job. For the Cleveland Indians. Well, a guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out in the inning. Can it start a rally? One down, runner at first. First pitch on the way. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. And that's Drupal Cabrera had an outstanding year offensively 161 hits, hit over 300, stole 17 right bases, and he's going to have to continue that play in 2010 for the Cleveland Indians. Here's the delivery. Got him. Strikeout number 10 today. This pitch has a little life to it at 84, and the gun is a pretty good movement. Well, sometimes you get fooled so badly, there's just nothing else you can do but hope and pray that you put the ball in play, hopefully foul, to get another pitch to hit. Sizemore has that impact speed. They've got to keep an eye on him. He's going to impact this game. We'll see Canerco holding him in there. First pitch. Nice shatters his bat. A line drive. Mark Burley, that's another good inning. Is he getting the big hitters now? Big strikeout totals. Loosen them up. Seventh inning stretch time on the south side. And Alex Rios to lead off. He bounced out his last time. Well, it's always nice to have a defensive replacement coming off the bench and holding a lead or holding a deficit and giving yourself a chance to win. Now he needs to come up with a big play. This ball is hammered deep right. And Kearns gets to it. It's going to be Przinski. 0 for 2 thus far. Base is empty. One out. First pitch to him. Swing and a ball hit well down the right field line. Into the corner. Out of here. A home run. 
They trim a bit off that deficit. A solo shot, only one down. Well, another one right there, Gary, and that's two home runs and for this team today, and it's they're spreading the wealth. Well, I tell you, the pitching and defense have got to be nervous right now as the Southsiders look locked in at the plate. They've almost caught them. The pitch from Carmona. Swings a little late that time. Strike one. And in a clutch situation, Steve, a big-time home run. This puts this game up for grabs. And if you can follow the home run with more offense, it can make such a difference. Keep that momentum going. And they're happy to tie that one up. Back to an even ball game with that solo shot. solo shot that has an impact on the chances of winning and it shows up right here on our Pepsi WPA graph. Well, you got to feel for this pitcher now he's just getting pounded up. And after you give up that first one Steve sometimes you lose your focus and you make a fat pitch and it looks like that's what he did. Well you've got to let go of something negative and get yourself focused again he's not getting it done. Now up to the plate. But Gary really the important for the Sox right, right there to tie the this up. Hitter. Now if Number Chicago three, can get a big Martin hit they've got a chance to take the lead. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Hit sharply towards the hole. Out, out number two. With the Chicago White Sox. Left fielder. And one Pierre six. to bat. We'll get another shot Pierre. after hitting into that double play last time up. Base is empty and two down. Hot shot towards the hole. And through for a hit, the go-ahead run is on. Uh, you have two outs in the inning. Your job is to get on base any way you can. Now they have the go-ahead run on base. So Alexei Ramirez is batting. Lifetime, he's gone 0 for 2 against Jensen Lewis. Lewis with a pitch. Pitch out. Nothing doing, though. A smash to first, and he'll step on first to retire the side. So they get the long ball working as they have two solo homers in this half of the inning. We've got a stalemate going here in Chicago. Big bats ready to make an appearance. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. His plan for getting this game back tied up worked now uh, for his pitching staff to hold it that way. And leading it off, Shinsu Chu. He's driven home three in this one. Well, he's already produced three runs in this game. He's clearly swinging the hot bat. You know they're going to be very careful with him here. And he starts Chu out. Strike one. And Burley gets it by. Called strike and the count will go to 0-1. This is where you want to go with the breaking ball. To the outside corner. Paint the black. Get the call. The hitter gave up on it. He got the pitch he wanted. Good movement to that cutter. And he's in the hole now. 0-2. Here's the pitch. Struck him out. That's going to be 11 in the game. Well, Gary, he's not messing around, going right at him on the 0-2 count. He didn't waste anything. He just went right for the juggling. One out, nobody on.
Here's the pitch to Peralta. He set up away. Cutter misses. One and oh. Here's the 1 0 from Burley. On the ground to second. Beckham. Out Retiring for Alta. And it'll be Valbuena standing in the hip. Hasn't had much success yet in this game. He's hoping to get something this time. Base is empty with two outs. And the first pitch. And Burley gets it by. Called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. Gets the fastball by him that time, and he's in control now, 0-2. Well, he's got great movement on that two-seamer. It's one of the best around. Ball Fastball one. is a waste pitch that time, 1-2. and two. Lined right at the second baseman. And that one's put away to retire the side. Three up, three down this half inning. And we are still knotted up in Chicago. And Paul Kaderko to lead it on. Number 14, Paul Kaderko. Now the first pitch. Fastball swung out and missed. 0 and 1. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Lewis with the pitch. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Conerco now will look to tighten up that zone. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And he's on. That's the go-ahead run. Guy tries to sneak one down and in to get the strike three call, but he fights it off. Outstanding job at the play. And that is so demoralizing for a pitcher. You work so hard to get ahead on the count, and then you give up a base hit. No one out and a runner on first. First pitch to Quinton. Lewis gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Well, you talk about a guy who just corkscrewed himself into the ground. Bad timing. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. This one's grounded hard up the middle. There's one. And two. Double play. A oh, beautiful looking double play right there. Pitcher's best friend. And that shortens the inning, shortens the number of pitches that have to be thrown. It's all about the fence. And Beckham's in the box. Two outs and nobody on. And here's the first one. Line drive. That's foul towards first. Oh and one. Lewis kicks and delivers. Here it comes towards center field. Gets down. The go-ahead runs on base. Now Steve looked like that was a strike. Ball was up high, but I think in the zone. Well, up and away, but on an 0-2 count, you're thinking, I need to make contact. Exceptional job of eye-hand coordination. And he starts Rios out. A line drive towards the hole. And Peralta's able to get to that one. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. We've got a stalemate going here in Chicago. None other than Manny Acta there. And at this point, every move is critical. He hasn't got any margin for error. Ma in the box. He's going to start the ninth inning. Fouled away. Oh, 
0 and 1. Burley kicks ball, and ball. delivers. Oh, and he lays off the fastball. Good pitch, 1 and 1. That two seam fastball is such an effective pitch. One, because it gets ground ball outs, but two, it sets up his other pitches. Ball. Ooh, tough to lay off there, but it's 2 and 1. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Takes a swing at that fastball, but doesn't make contact, and it goes even at two. Boy, he's got great movement on that two seamer. It's one of the best around. The 2 2 pitch. This is popped down the right field line. Should be room. Good effort there, but he couldn't get into position to make that play. Here's the pitch. And he fouls off another one. Well, he threw a swing and miss pitch right there, and the hitter just got a piece of it. Boy, the pitcher's got to be wondering what's next. What does he have to do to get this at bat over with? Well, he has to throw another pitch, that's for sure. Oh. Brings that curveball, just about had him, but it's full. Well, if he's going to make a mistake, which he hasn't made many in this game, it's going to be now. His pitch counts over 100. This is when he seems to tire and make mistakes with his pitches. Got him. That is strikeout number 12. Right fielder. Well, they went away right there, and he put a pretty good swing on it, but just couldn't quite make contact. Walking back to the dugout now. One out. Base is empty. Kern settles in, ready to go for his pitch. There's a bullet towards third. Two down here in the inning. Marson's in the batter's box. Struck out swinging last time. Two outs, bases empty. Change up just misses. One and oh. Well, he has an outstanding changeup, Gary. That that pitch that keeps the hitters off balance at the plate. Curly's pitch taken for a strike. One and one. You know what also makes this changeup effective is not just the change in velocity, Gary, but it's the movement, the sinking action he gets on the ball. ball. That misses down in the zone. Two and one. The best curveballs are the ones that start in the strike zone, then fall out of the strike zone. He couldn't get him to fish for that one, though. Here's the pitch. Oh. And he lays off that pitch. That's on the hands. Three and one. Change up, swung on and missed. Three, two. The full count pitch. Struck him out. 13 Ks, one game. And they go quietly offensively in this half inning. Nothing across. We're still tied here in Chicago. Bottom three due up next. None other than Ozzy. That's Ozzy Guillen. This is where the at-bats are very crucial. He doesn't want to have to go to extras if he can help it. Leading it off, A.J. Przinski. Here's the first pitch. Hit in the air. This one's going well into the stands. Off to the right. Swing and a rocket toward short. And he's on the potential winning run. Get ready. I tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. And by the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. Runner on first base, nobody out. Lewis with the pitch. 
Swings and hits this one deep down the line and left. As he drops back and puts it away. Well, the hitter just missed this one. He's going to want to have this one back. The left fielder able to range back and put it away. Runner at first with one down. Here's the first pitch to Kotsake. Hit sharply towards the hole. With this big base hit, Gary, they have a chance now to win this ball game. The winning run on base. Now they need somebody else to step up right here and try to get it done. Here's Juan Pierre looking to bring that runner in. Over his career, a 265 hitter off the Indians. Swung on and hit. This one to Sizemore. And that one falls in there for a single. Well, anytime you're a hitter and you can get three hits in the game, you're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. So Alexei Ramirez is batting. He's looking to put an end to it right now. A base hit or a short fly ball probably puts an end to this. That would be a game winner. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Pick. Run. And the double play. They got a vote. It's called short work of three. Took six pitches. Well, we'll head to extra frames here in Chicago. The top of the order is due up next. Get a look here at the manager Manny Acton. And thinking I'm sure about the approach here to win this ball game. This is a big moment here for Grady Sizemore. He's not going to go down without a fight. You know that. Top half of this extra inning with a batter who could be the go-ahead and maybe the winning one. Now this is going to be an all-out war right here, Gary. Both guys are going to bring their best stuff. Jenks with a delivery. Starts him out with a fastball for a strike. Better to go after the fastball when a guy has quality secondary pitches. Even though it's down to the zone, ball. you've got to swing at that. Good patience. Grady Sizemore letting that one go by for a ball and an even count. Well, he tried to go outside on the outside corner with that. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. And that is in there, the go-ahead run on base. We talk about a guy who's just wearing out the opposition. That's a four-hit day for him. He is locked in. Batting here is Asdrubal Cabrera. A runner on first, no outs. And he starts Cabrera out. And Jenks misses. At the belt, the 1-0. He watches that fastball. It'll leave it up to count at 1-1. There's a reason they put the number one down when signaling for the fastball. It has to be your number one pitch, your best pitch. That's what he saw right there. And it remains one and two. On the ground to first. And out number one as he steps on the base. Too late and he is safe at second. 
Well, nice seven. stop by the first baseman there, with the runner able to advance in the scoring position. Now. One on, one out. Here's the first pitch. He makes contact, line drive. Out number two. That will hold the runner at second. Shin Su Chu looking to set off some fireworks in this opportunity he has right now to come up with a hit. Had a couple of hits, four trips to the plate. He's driven in three. They need more. Game's tied. Sizemore has that impact speed. They've got to keep an eye on him. He's going to impact this game. We'll see Canerco holding him in there. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. This one towards Pierre. That'll do it as they put that one away. They pick up no runs on one hit and leave a man at second. We've got a stalemate going here in Chicago. And the three hole will be coming right up. Base hit is last time. First take. Number 14, Paul Canerco. And he starts Canerco out. Oh, and he saws him off as this one's hit on the ground. One away. For the Chicago White Sox. Right fielder. Number 20. And it's Carlos, Carlos Quinton in the box now. He homered earlier in the ballgame. Uh, production at the plate here so far, Gary. The RBI base hit. And then obviously the home run as well. So the game's tied. And he's been a big part of it. Nobody on base, one away. First pitch to Quinton. Line towards second. That one in the alley. This could be two or more. It rolls all the way to the wall. Well, with that big hit right there, he only needs a triple to complete the cycle. But hey, that's the toughest one to get. Let's see if he can do it. Here is the opportunity for the youngster Gordon Beckham. A great opportunity for him in the Sox. Lewis with the pitch. Back up the middle. And it's through. That's a base hit. And well, two hits the last game, and you can see he was getting a little confidence as that game went on. And he's carrying it into this one with another good start. Runners at first and third, one away. And he starts Rios out. He's looking a little confused out there right now. He just swung at a pitch that was in the dirt. Swung on, hit. And there it is. Could this be it? And game over. The winning run scores, and that's a wrap. Walk-off win for the whole team. Getting it done in uh, extraordinary fashion. Everybody celebrating. And we present our Pepsi Clutch Performance Award. Our fantastic display by Mark Burley got it done today. Well, you know, Gary, you look at the ball strike ratio today, and it's just outstanding what this young man did. And managers love it when their pitchers are throwing strikes, but also fielders do, because you know that any chance you have, the ball's put in play. Problem is, this team didn't put many in play. Struck out over 10 hitters in this game, but it does keep your team fresh and your head's in the game. Great job. And Steve, that ought to send these folks home happy. Well, no question about it. They get the win in a close game. A lot of excitement and enthusiasm and ready for the next one. So glad you could join us. For Steve Phillips and John Crock, I'm Gary Thorne. We'll see you real soon.